All right, welcome back for part two of our Seaton Guide 10XY uh, video installment here. In the first section, we went over loading ahead, setting up the fixture, and saving the whole location. Uh, and that one you saw me do the intake guide hole locations. Off camera, I went ahead and did the exhaust guide locations. It's the same exact process. Um, and now we're back here with our intake cutter and we need to go over the process for setting the vertical zero feeds and speeds and the heights at which the work head is going to float and lock and when the sphere moves from lock to unlock for cutting so if i go ahead here and press move one we're going to move over to the first hole So we can move our first hole. Now, I can use either the hand wheel or the feed button and bring the pilot down. I'm going to stop just before it goes into the gut. So the tip of the pilot is just starting to go into the gut. Now before I go into the guide, I'm going to go over to the operation setup page where the I.O. buttons are. And we have a button down here that says work head float. What that does is it lets the work head float to allow the pilot to kind of self-center and make sure it goes down smooth into the guide. We also want to make sure that our pilot is locked. If I bring this back up here, you'll see when this button's green center pilot, you can see that's the new joint action. That's for cutting. When it's red, it's locked. That's for going down into the hole. So we lock it. We lock the pilot and float the work head to go into the hole. And then when we're down into the hole and we centered everything up, we lock the work head and we unlock the pilot for cutting. So I'll float this work head. I'm gonna go ahead and stick the guide in. I like to leave a little wiggle. Once I got it in there a ways, I can use the hand wheel as well. And I'll just come down. Now what I'm looking for, like there, we are pilots, the rotten pilots are tapered, just about the last inch. What I'm looking for is I'm gonna keep coming down until I see that the guide, the pilot is registered on that taper in the guide and I'll see the tool holder is moving on top of the pilot. And I'm moving down here. I can see right about here that this tool is now, the pilot has stopped moving down and the tool is riding on the pilot. When I see that visually, that's when I wanna lock the work head. And I wanna unlock the pilot. And now with it in that position, I'm ready to touch off and set my zero. So this default had a 3,000 feed rate and a 400 RPM setting. For touching off, I like to do somewhere around 150 RPM. 100 RPM is fine. Something nice and slow. And then what I want to do, simply start the spindle, come up here to the hand wheel, the 1,000 increment, and select that. Then on the hand wheel, I'm going to click it one click at a time and you can go at a moderate speed just make sure you're feeling each click as it goes by I'm just looking to to see and hear when I hear that cutter kind of touch off on that seat so right there I'm seeing it. it's just making a chip the, I can hear the cutter is just touching that seat. And at that point, without moving, I'm going to stop the spindle. And then I'm going to press vertical zero. Now, the vertical DRO is over here on the left, under the feed buttons for the spindle. And up here is vertical zero. If I press that, it'll ask me if I'm sure. I can say yes. And that's now zeroed it out. So now we have whole location, and we've also touched off of the seat. On the right hand side of this operation tab, this is where we write out the program. If you're coming from an SG9 MTS, these locations are pretty much the same as the manual Matic software. The only difference is the machine is going to automatically move to them. Now the easiest way that I find is we want to program this going back up. And the first thing is, we need to figure out when this seat's going to clean up with whatever pattern we're using. And we probably don't know what depth we're going to need to go to. 
So the easiest way to do that is I could automatically just keep running this and cutting a little bit out of that seat and kind of restoring the final depth and just saving that number until I see it clean up. So I'll start out here and we'll just say, let's take a five foul depth of cut. I always like to set my start cutting height at about 50 thousandths above zero, so 0 0.05. And I'll let it move back up to that starting position. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this a few times. Before I do that, I wanna set the speeds and feeds while I'm here. Kind of my opportunity to test and see what works well. For a feed rate, I'm, I like to start out at 0 0.0015, so one and a half thousand. And an RPM, I'll usually start around 200 RPM. Now, this machine has the options for uh, a cutting feed and speed and a finished feed and speed. If you want to go slower while you're finishing or if you want to go faster, both can work. It really depends on the seat and the material that it's made out of. And then there's options tab and go to there. I can see my finish RPM. They default to 500 RPM. I don't want to run that fast. It'll probably chatter. So I, I usually like to go somewhere around maybe 50 or so RPM above or below my cutting speed. Right now it's set to 200. So I'm going to type in 250 RPM. And I can tell it the number of finished revolutions. I like to do usually just one for starters. And I'll see how my concentrates do. If you're coming from manual machines, the difference with this is on the manual machine, when you're finishing on the operator, you can kind of sit there at the seat and maintain pressure. Um, and let it ride until it sparks out, just slow RPM. With a, an automated machine like this, with the ball screw on the Z-axis, if we sit it just goes to a position. So if we just let it sit there a long time, the cutter's just gonna ride on the seat and it'll leave a chatter. So it's more important with this to kind of be a little more aggressive, I guess you would say, and, and go in and cut and let it clean up. And it will clean up precisely uh, if it's gonna do it all at once. So that's kind of a, a change in strategy if you're coming from a menu. I always like to check the turn spindle while retracting button. I just let the spindle it's coming up. The uh, retract RPMs I always make the same as my finish RPM. That's just a personal thing. So I'll make those two fifty as well. Right, this all looks good. So now down here at the very bottom there's the auto cycle button or the auto buttons. I can just press this and let this run once. So I'll let it go. We can watch the DRO and you can see here it's moving down from that 50,000 start down to negative 5,000. Well, we didn't really cut anything here to clean up, so we're going to need to go deeper. How much deeper? Well, we kind of just guess and check. Uh, we have what's called the auto cycle additional depth button. And what that does is if I were to just auto, I could change my finish cutting depth here. Go to 10,000, go to 15,000. If I rerun it, it's always going to start at that 50 thou, at that start cutting height, and it will feed down. If I already you know, have no material left to cut, or I just want to keep going a little bit deeper, I can use the additional depth and it'll skip to like 5 thou above where the last depth is, and then just cut a little bit more. So it's a little faster, especially when I'm just trying to see how much I want to cut. That's the fastest way to do it. So up here, I have a 2, a 5, an 8 thou, and a 10 thou additional depth on so I can go ahead and press the 10,000 uh, additional depth and then use the auto cycle additional depth. If I tap that, it'll ask me if I want to permanently change my uh, final depth to uh, the new additional depth, which would be 10,000, so a total of negative 15,000. In this case, I'm gonna say yes. The option to say no would be if you're running a long production run and maybe you're, you're reconditioning the seats, and you get ahead and you're cutting and you're cutting and you're cutting and you get to the one seat and it doesn't clean up. The option to press no is so that you could automatically come back and use the auto cycle additional depth to just clean up that one seat. Maybe take another two, maybe take another five thou off uh, and not have to go back and clean the rest of them. Uh, obviously in that scenario, you know, you'll have one seat that's not of the same depth. Uh, you could go back and recut all the other ones as well. Uh, but if you're within your tolerance and that's okay for your shop standard, then that saves you a little bit of time. I'm going to click yes. 
and you'll see this just moves down and starts cutting almost immediately. So I'm gonna need to go a lot deeper. And I can keep running. And just keep pressing yes. And you can see it's just taking another 10 down, another 10 down, another 10 down. Especially if you're setting up and doing uh, an R&R &R where you're putting new seats in and you're gonna have to take a lot of material and you don't know how much you're gonna have to take, this is your fastest way to figure out the final step. Final step. You can also change these buttons. You're not limited to just 10 thou at a time. You can press and hold these. A four function calculator will pull up. You can type in 100 thou, 150 thou. Uh, you, know, you can type whatever increments that's gonna make it so you can work uh, fast enough. For now, we'll just keep it running. Right? I think we got about two angles there. See if we can get the top angle to come in. And now we're definitely cleaning up making uh, three angles. We're actually cutting this with a five angle cutter, but uh, there's been porting done to this head, so there's so much detail taken out, we're not actually cutting with that uh, bottom angle. Um, so again, if I was doing this and setting up and looking for a spec, uh, you know, at this time I could move back up out of here, put a valve in, check valve depth. So again, and, and you verify it, if the number you're cutting to is, is what you're looking for. And now it's stored that number and we're just gonna cut all the rest of these back to that. So if we assume that that was good and we wanna program up the rest of this, uh, we've got our finished cutting up now is, is down here at this new value of negative 55,000. Uh, and the start cutting height is still at 50 thou. Now the lowest cutter head is a pilot, so I'm gonna move back up here. Remember earlier I said we were looking for that point where the, the pilot was in the guide and the tool holder's moving on top of it. I'm gonna look for that same point going up here. So I'm gonna look for when the, the pilot is just pulling back up out of the guide. And when I see that the, the pilot is just starting to come back up, that's where I wanna press and hold set for the lower cutter head over pilot. And then I can come up and I have rapid to pilot height. Rapid to pilot height here is right where the tip of the pilot's gonna go into the guide. And once I see that, press and hold set. And then my final value is head clearance height. Head clearance height is just clearance for the pilot to move full the hole. So once I'm anywhere here up above uh, and I got room, I can just press and hold set. And that's now programmed all of my Z values. So we can now inspect this if we like the finish that we're seeing. Uh, maybe we adjust our Fuji speeds, maybe we want to run a little faster. Uh, I might give it another 250 RPMs and I'll bump up my finish to 300 here. Okay, now I can go back to the location step. Let's say we want to cut uh, the rest of these intakes. So now to run this, I'll just go back to uh, locations here at the bottom of the locations I have cut boxes and they're green right now if I make them yellow it'll skip that hole so since I've already cut this first one I can just turn hole one off and then I press start auto cycle and now you see it's going to go to two and it'll automatically cut this one and now you can see it's going through that it's going to each of those locations that we program uh, the lower cutter head pilot over the rapid heights and the start heights
That's really all there is to that. So, that kind of concludes the second part. Um, hopefully that, that made sense and it's helpful if you just got a 10x fly and you're learning or if you're interested in 10x fly and how they work and you're welcome to contact us if you have any questions and look out for part three of the video segment uh, where I'll now, now that we got all this program, we'll, we'll show you, we'll finish out this head and show you the production side of it, the fun part where you just take this out, load the next one in and here we go. All right, guys.